Hey, hey guys! So today I am just going to show you how quick and easy it is to put together these little wallets. So there is a few different versions. You have the version with the eyelet at the top. It has a snap on the side here. You have a version that actually has no tab that I'm going to include. And the snap on the side. There is another version with no tab on the outside of it where you could just have a rectangle one. And with this one you can put the snap in the center or you could put two snaps. Let me just show you here. You could put two snaps, one on either side instead. So there's that one. And then there is this one, which is the one we will be doing today. It is the snap top version. And I use a rivet on the top because a cam snap, although you can squeeze it on, is pretty tight for that spot. So I like to use the rivet. And you can see I have, I just have four cars in here, but you can fit a lot more than that. So they slide in and out. And one thing I have done is I like to line this with an Ollie Fun Fabric because the cards slide in and out super nice with that. And we have a couple of options. You can just do plain rectangle style flaps on the inside if you choose. That makes it super quick. Or I do have the option of these V-style flaps included in the design and that is what I am going to show you today on this version right here. So let's get started. All right so what we are going to need for the project today is super simple. You need two pieces of vinyl if you're doing the, the inside pockets and you still need two pieces of vinyl if you're doing the rectangle pockets except for you wouldn't need to have it cut like this. You could have just two pieces of rectangle. So we need this for the front and the back and I have what is called an Ollie Fun Fabric in my hoop. It's just more like a plasticky kind of craft material. And I like to use that on the inside of my wallets. And then what else I like to use on the inside of my wallets, it's optional, is a piece of cardstock paper. I like to use that to stiffen up the wallet because it really depends on how you like it. So some like it stiffer, some don't, so that's going to stiffen it up. And I also like to use a piece of lining material on the inside. So if you do a design on the front, then a lining piece of material is going to cover up the stitching on the inside. Alright, so the first thing is to go and run the placement stitch for the hoop number one, which is the V-style flaps. Alright, so here I have done the placement stitch for the V-flaps and the part up here is obviously I'm doing the snap tab which will be up here and it's a little hard to see but you have these two lines that are right here and those are the center of the flaps. So if you are putting, let's see, oh that's so helpful. So if you are putting a piece of material that you want to fussy cut and you want it to be specific on the inside, that helps you place them so that this is one side of the flap and this is the other side. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to put on the material for the flaps. So you just put it on, tape it in place and take it back to the machine and we will run the bean stitch that's going to show the outline. So there we have the triple bean stitches. 
And the next thing that we, so these are the actual outlines of the pocket. So the next thing that we need to do is you can be finished here and you can actually just cut it out as you like. Or I do have another stitch in the machine that is going to show you where to cut it out at around an eighth of an inch. Now I like to run that stitch without threading the machine because I like to just see the holes and not the thread. But you can do it either way or you can just be done and cut it out as is. It's a little hard to see. All right, so I went and I ran that stitch and I know it's a little hard to see, but if you kind of look down the center, you can see some of those whole stitches I just did. And if you look kind of down the side, I do have a picture that shows better holes. Anyway, so now this is actually done. There's really not much to this if you want to do the one with the little V pockets. And the only reason you would run it like this is so that you have a finished edge in there. So now I'm going to take it out. So now what we need to do is we actually need to use the first stitches that we have done on the back here. No, they're a little harder to see, but the, the first placement outline stitch. So you want to cut out around that placement stitch, but you want to leave about a quarter of an inch or so. So if this is your placement stitch here, you want to go on the outside when you're making the cut. And I like to use a rotary cutter. So you want to cut there's a line and you want to cut outside so you can give yourself a little bit of wiggle room with material. And something else I did not mention was the fact that this piece here that's sticking out for the snap tab, well the tab comes all the way to the top which means you need to leave material going above it. So you need the material on the other side of it so that when you put it together you're going to have enough material to cut on the top rounded portion. I have done it so many times and forgotten that and the reason it's like that is because it fits in a 5 by 7 hoop and I could not get it to go any larger with the placement stitch so you have to put the extra material there. So if we can see it here, you can see I have left enough around the placement stitch. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to cut straight down here to create the two pockets, which is why I ran that other stitch. However, well you can kind of see it on the back here where that the holes are, but you can always use the two marks that I did at the beginning there for the placement stitch, you can always use that to go straight down. So now we have two pockets and we need to cut out either using scissors, so you can use some scissors or an X-Acto knife and you would go along here and you'll leave about an eighth of an inch above. So this is what she will be left with after cutting them out and this is what you need and this is the back so you can see this is the smaller side and this is the other side with the snap top portion so we are going to just set these aside 
and we will be using them in the next hooping. Alright, so I am back with hoop number two and we just need to first do the placement stitch. Alright, here is the placement stitch done and what I want to show you is the fact that there are little notches here and those are the notches that are going to be used to put on the flaps. So what I like to do is I like to extend those notches and it's at the corners like that. So that way when other material is on you will be able to see those. So there's one. So whether you're doing the flaps with V edge or whether you're just doing regular flaps, you do need to be able to see those on the underside of the hoop. And this is the tab for the top portion and this is the tab that will snap the wallet together. So what I also like to do is for my wallets, I like to use a piece of cardstock which makes them thicker. So what I have done is there is this piece here which you just cut a piece to fit inside of the cardstock and you just put it on like that. You can spray adhesive it, um, which is what I have done. You can tape it in place. And the next thing, so if you're not using that, clearly you would spray adhesive or tape this and then you would just put your fabric material over top covering everything, making sure you have enough material going on top over here. So you would do it this way, but I'm going to add this inside. Like that. And then you do need to just tape the edges down to keep it in place. And if you were going to be adding a design, now is the time to do it before you're putting the backing on. So if you're going to add anything to it, you need to do it now. Because then we go right to the back portion. Uh, let's see here, can we see it? So what I like to do is, if I have a design on the front, I actually like to add a lining piece on the underside. So what I like to do is I like to put a piece of lining material, and I don't like to have it in the tab spots because I find it makes them too thick, but this rectangle piece right here, that is a very good placement for a piece of lining to go in. So you put it there all the way to the end, and you still want to be able to see the stitches for the, or sorry, the placement for the uh, flaps that are going to be going in. All right, I just want to be able to show you guys what it looks like to match the flaps up with. So, I'm going to give that a little piece of tape over here and a little piece over here. So the next thing, so if you've added the lining, so this is the time to add the lining. And if you don't want to add the lining, then you just skip that. So the next thing that we have to do is we actually have to add the flaps. So if you did the first hoop and you want to add the V-style flaps, then we will be adding them this way. So you need to make sure that the portion you have for the top is on the right side and you need to make sure it goes above as well. And let me just draw it here. So here is my placement stitching. So this is the original placement stitching that was done on this side. And on this side. And to line up the material for the flaps, you just need to use 
this little portion here that's sticking out at the edge on both sides and that lines up to the edge on here. And again, the little edge on this side, this is a longer portion, so that goes upwards, and then the little portion comes down towards the bottom, and that one gets lined up to the edge of the line over here, and it gets lined up to the drawn lines on the V. So it goes straight across like that. And something you're going to want to make sure to do is you are going to want to tape in place your pieces, but you're going to want to make sure that when you tape it, you tape up this little portion so that it doesn't catch on the machine when stitching. So I just tape it really well there so that this will be flat and it won't catch. And I do the same thing on the other side. And there we go. So over here, if you look carefully, you can see that this little edge is lined up with the placement line underneath. And it's also lined up going straight across with the two red placement marks that I have there. So now it is actually ready to go back onto the hoop and we will do the finishing step that is going to hold the front and back together. Alright, so it is done. So what I did was I ran the outside stitching, which is a triple bean stitch, and I ran these little uh, placement stitches for the snaps. Now I typically do that without thread, but that's easier for you guys to see. So there's the front, and there's the back. And it's probably easier for me to show you now that it's stitched, how this side lines up up here with the stitching, or not the stitching, the line that I put there and the line that I put here. See? So it is all stitched in. And now it is time to cut it out. Alright, so we have the wallet all cut out and it folds in half just like this. And I like to use what's called a brayer on the edge of it. And when I have paper on the inside, it works a lot better with the brayer. So that it just helps give it its shape. And the next thing we have to do is we need to add the snap and the snap tab to the top. All right, so now I'm going to add my snaps and I want to show you another tool that I absolutely love. This is called a Japanese screw punch or just a screw punch and it has bits on the end here that will come out. They screw out and in by this little piece right here. And I use this all the time to put the ones for the rivets. And the nice thing about this is you can use it anywhere. It does not have to be limited to the size you can push in. 
So that's why I love this. However, you do need to make sure you get the actual brand ones made in Japan that are made of brass because the cheap ones do not stay sharp and do not twist as well. So this is probably around the $50 mark, which is not cheap, but it's a fabulous tool. Anyway, let me show you how it works. So you find where you're going to put the hole and you just put it on top and let's see here. Well, and you just push down and up. See? So you really want to hold your material and you got to hold this tight. Otherwise, <laughs> the material twists the first time you probably will ever use one. And you just push down and voila. So for me, I think this is one of the best tools I have. So for the other one, I'll just show you this version. And see, that's the thing about this one. You can only push it in so much. So that's why I like the other one. So you put that one in and you just click. So I am going to go ahead and put in my little button snaps. So you can use cam snaps if you prefer, but I like these little button ones. again. All right, so let's try this the right way around this time. You want to make sure your pieces are where they're supposed to be. So this piece needs to go inside. And up top. I'm going to put in my rivet, my other piece. I don't recommend a cam snap for this spot. You might be able to fit it in, but the rivet is a lot better because it is actually not that much space for a cam snap. And there we have it, a nice little center fold wallet and a few different options for you to choose from. All right, so I thank you for watching, subscribe, give me a thumbs up and have a wonderful day.